Hey guys, Dr. Adil here. So today we're gonna to be continuing the series and we're gonna be talking about what your doctor may not tell you about the musculoskeletal system. So I'm a regenerative sports medicine expert and I'm also a powerlifter and a natural bodybuilder. So I've had the good fortune of treating some of the top athletes in the world and I've learned a ton from them because I always ask them questions. And I've also had the good fortune of being trained by some of the top experts in sports medicine in the world. So I'm gonna share all that knowledge with you because the musculoskeletal system is the most important organ system and I will explain why. So. First things first, so what is the musculoskeletal system? So traditionally we thought it was just there to support your tissues and structures and to help with movement and to protect your organs. But we know now it's actually a complex organ system. It's not just for movement, it's actually for longevity and health. So how does it improve longevity and health? So the way it does that is through a few different mechanisms. So one of the newest mechanisms that we found out about are something called exosomes. So exosomes, you could think of them as little messenger cells that come in little packages and they have all these little goodies in them. And so they release these goodies when you strengthen and you train your muscles and they send these goodies all throughout your body. So they're, they're like little messenger cells. And so these exosomes get uh, secreted when you build muscle and they help to reduce inflammation, they help to reduce your risk of cancer, they help to improve insulin sensitivity, and they also help to improve brain health. And then similarly, there's something called myokines, which is a class of cytokines, which are also messenger molecules. And they also help to do these similar type of effects. So that's probably why you've heard of muscle helping with all these different various things throughout your body. It's not just helping to make you look stronger and make you feel stronger. It's actually having all these other effects on all these other organ systems. So there's a reason why muscle protects your heart. It helps your kidneys, it helps your liver, it helps your brain. It helps every organ system in the body and it helps metabolically as well. And it also helps to decrease your risk of diabetes, high blood pressure, and many other chronic diseases. And then the other mechanism through which exercise helps, which actually just came out recently, it actually helps to decrease inflammation through what's called the cannabinoid system. So yes, that's right, exercise can make you high. So that feeling of post-workout high isn't just a good feeling, it actually has an anti-inflammatory effect all throughout your body. And we know chronic inflammation is one of the root causes and mechanisms to many diseases from Alzheimer's, chronic pain, and cancer. So if we can decrease those through exercise, then that's a great thing. Now the biggest problem is that there's actually no measurement done for the musculoskeletal system. So if you go to your family doctor, they measure your heart, they do what's called a heart tracing, they can do thyroid, they can measure your hormones, they get a measurement of your endocrine system, they'll do blood work to check your liver, to check your kidney, and they do all sorts of tests to check all the organ systems in your body. But somehow the muscle system gets neglected. There's absolutely nothing done. They may do a very cursory examination of just range of motion, but that doesn't predict or say anything about the health of your muscular system. So we need to actually start measuring the muscle system and there still isn't any standardized measurement that has been validated to the extent that we need. So there is something called a functional movement screen which can predict injury risk somewhat and then you can also do what's called grip strength and which is a predictor of longevity. And so there are a few measures out there but there's still nothing holistically that can say, okay, this is your musculoskeletal system, this is where you are in the percentile risk and this is what you need to do to improve it. So that's still something that needs to be worked on and that's gonna involve a lot of data and that's something actually my startup business Exalt is working on but I think there's, gonna, there's a lot of other people doing that too and hopefully over the next few years we'll have a better measurement system and be able to guide people on more specifics on how to train and build their muscular system. So you may be wondering why is it so important to actually build up your system? So not only because of all the effects we talked about, when you don't train your muscular system, what happens is you get something called osteoporosis and sarcopenia. So osteoporosis, most of you are probably familiar with because it's quite common and it's become mainstream and there's lots of treatments for it, lots of research being done on it. And so that's where your bone density becomes low. And the other side of that is that what doesn't often get talked about is that your muscle density also becomes low and that's called sarcopenia. And that's a disease of muscle loss and wasting as you age. And you lose about 1% of muscle mass after age 30. So if you're not doing any regular resistance training, you're gonna become quite weak and frail by the time you're 60. And that's actually the biggest predictor of dying earlier and of having poor quality of life is loss of muscle tissue. So what can you do to prevent sarcopenia and osteoporosis and get all these amazing health benefits of exercise? So you need to figure out how to design a properly periodized program. That's not easy. It actually takes a trained professional to do that. And so unless you have a lot of expertise in fitness and health, I usually recommend getting a coach or a trainer. And if you can't afford it, then there are some valuable resources out there, such as my YouTube channel and Instagram, where there's a lot of good information there, but there are also obviously a lot of other trainers who are trying to help in the space. And so what we're trying to do is to get that message across that fitness is more than just about putting on uh, muscle, it's about longevity and health and quality of life. And so 
one of the basic recommendations I have, which most people actually don't follow because I see so many smart, intelligent people training in the gym, but they're actually following what's a 1980s bodybuilder program. They're training arms once a week, they're training chest once a week, they're training legs once a week, and they're just doing a body part split. And that's actually not the best way to train for 99% of people, especially if you're intermediate or a beginner, which most people are. It's very hard to get to the advanced stage. That takes, you know, that can take seven to 10 years of consistent training to get to that point where you should start doing that specialized training. So the reason why you see people doing the specialized training is because bodybuilders who are enhanced and are also genetically gifted are the ones who are you know, kind of giving this advice to everyone. But the reality is this isn't the best advice for the majority of us who are not enhanced and who don't have gifted genetics. The best training program for regular people is actually a full body split three times a week. So this works much better because you get what's called the repeated bout effect where you have higher frequency and your muscles can adapt to the higher frequency quicker and you, you can make more gains in a shorter period of time. So it's, you know, you, you would basically train your full body in that training sessions and you repeat that a few times per week. Similarly, once you do that for a year or so, then you can progress to a more intermediate program where you're doing an upper body and lower body split. And for most people, that's sufficient to stay at that split for several years before going to advanced stage. And getting to advanced stage, there's certain metrics you can use based off how much you're squatting and deadlifting. And based off that, you can decide if you're ready to go to the advanced stage. But honestly, most people are not there and most people actually never get there. And the reason they never get there is because they don't realize that they're actually not doing the right training protocol. So I recommend getting a trainer who actually knows about the evidence-based or science-based fitness approach. So, and I can't, I can't emphasize this enough. I feel like trainers should be a regulated health profession, just like physiotherapists, because they play such an important role in longevity and health. So hopefully we can get that achieved. Australia has already done that. And I'm hoping we can eventually do that here as well, because now you guys, as you've learned, that the musculoskeletal system is so important. It shouldn't be something that we're just kind of sending to some random trainer. It's something we should be sending to a regulated health professional who knows how to build up your muscle. So hopefully you guys like that video. Subscribe for more. Leave any comments down below and I'll answer those questions.